Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second part of the second day of the third Digital Health Society Summit. For those who are joining us only now, my name is Karolina Matskiewicz. I'm the Innovation Director of the Digital Health Society Summit at the European Connected Health Alliance, that is the organizer of the, of the summit. And um, I'm your host for today. I'm here to introduce the um, panel discussion, um, just as a very, very short recap. Uh, during the second day, we are connecting the dots um, between innovation, knowledge and communities. This is something, the three areas of work of the European Connected Health Alliance. And so my pleasure now to introduce the panel that will focus on connecting the dots in the EU presidencies through the ECH Alliance Community of Ecosystems. Um, the Digital Health Society is the, uh, was born during the Estonian presidency in the EU in 2017, and it has been active through the all presidencies. So in this panel, we have the representatives of the ecosystems of the ECH Alliance ecosystems uh, coming uh, from the countries that uh, recently held the presidency in the EU. Um, but my colleague, uh, Andy Bleden, who is the uh, community director um, at the ECH Alliance, he's your moderator for the session, and he will introduce the topic of the panel as well as the panelists in more detail. Andy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Caro, and good afternoon to all the colleagues that have joined us for this afternoon. As Caro said, today's session is about connecting up the dots between all of our innovation, our knowledge and our communities. I want to do even, even more of that where I can today, because what I'm looking to do is, is go back to some of the things that happened yesterday and talk about, we, we had a session on the presidencies of the EU. Today is a practical session where we go deep down and introduce some of our ecosystems that have been involved with the presidencies of the EU from all the way back to the beginning of the Digital Health Society, right up until not just the present day, but looking ahead to the future. So to be able to connect up the dots between our communities, the innovation and our knowledge within both the European Connected Health Alliance and the Digital Health Society. I'm gonna share a couple of slides with you, just briefly, because I'm, I'm conscious of these things, we haven't, I mean, we quite, quite often see too many slides. When I just, when I talk about a community, this is what I mean. So we have a, 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 an enormous global community of about 900 uh, member organizations, 20,000 experts. And we use our ecosystems to bring them together, to connect up those dots that you've heard people talk about. Many of you understand about the concept of ecosystem. Lots of people have talked about it today. Uh, but what we, what we want to be able to do is to actually get you to understand what we mean by ecosystems. We've been doing this now for 10 years. And the model is very clear and it's there in front of you. This idea about leading with a need, with leading with a need but also matching need and solution, breaking down silos in permanent gatherings, bringing together all the stakeholders in health and social care, from patients to industry, and transforming healthcare delivery, and also creating economic growth. What we're going to do today is quite exciting because we're going to actually do a little deep dive and bring together some of our ecosystems. And so I'm going to be really pleased to bring together our ecosystems from some of the countries that have taken part in those presidencies, whether that be Estonia, who, who as I said, brought about the development of our digital health, assist, health society. We're bringing in colleagues from Germany, from Slovenia, who are currently presidents of the EU, and also Finland. And lastly, France, to talk about what some of their plans for the future. So I'd like to introduce my panel this afternoon um, I'm very pleased to, to, to bring uh, up in front of you now all of our panellists. Personally, I'm very pleased to introduce Perrette from Estonia, from our Estonian ecosystem. We'll also be hearing next after that our colleagues from the German ecosystem in Medical Valley. I'm very then pleased to bring in our Slovenian ecosystem, Health, healthdays.si, led by Gregor. And then we'll, we'll then very quickly go back up to Finland, where we developed our Finnish network of ecosystems during their presidency, to hear what they've been up to. And then lastly, we'll, we'll have, a, have a gaze into the future and bring in our French ecosystem, Eurosanti, 
uh, where we've got an excellent uh, speaker from, from, from there, Suhal, from, from there. But for now, I'm very pleased. I don't want to talk any longer because I'm desperate to get in and introduce those ecosystems. So, Perret, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to take the floor, please, and tell us about the Estonian Connected Health Ecosystem. Hi, Andy, and thank you. Um, really, it, it was a flashback when you told about the, the year 2017. And actually, I remember the first lines were put on the paper to design or to, to, to bring, bring to life this concept of, uh, of digital health society. Unfortunately, I don't have the very first draft, which was the, like it, we use the, the old fashioned analog ways like paper and pen. So unfortunately, this, this is gone forever. But, uh, but I, I, I'm happy to see that the idea itself is really strong and, and has many supporters. My name is Pire Tirv and currently I'm working for the Connected Health Cluster and Science Park Tehnopol here in Estonia. But back then I was working for the Ministry of Social Affairs. And about our ecosystem, um, we are a platform for developing uh, innovative systems or solutions for the healthcare. And our main ambition is to really to have, uh, to create change in healthcare, in delivering healthcare whether it's a better access, higher quality, or some, in some cases also economical savings. In, in our ecosystem, we have approximately 50, 55 partners. We are strongly collaborating with uh, startups, big IT companies, but uh, very important members for us are those who actually know where the problem is. These are the hospitals, family doctors units, patients. And in Estonia, if you want to implement any of the innovative solutions in healthcare, you need to collaborate with the government, governmental organizations. Health insurance, which is um, uh, publicly provided here in Estonia, Ministry of Social Affairs, other, other institutions. And of course, where the, um, where the um, uh, science comes from, this is, these are the universities. Again, really important uh, part of, um, of our network. And... Um, in to Estonia is a beautiful place where to develop different things and solutions, but um, it's very small market. You need to have international networks supporting your activities and and to make you to make you more well known as we are at the moment. And for that, of course, European Connected Health Alliance is one of our good partners. And um, and what we do with with our companies, as I told you, new services products. This is something that we need to do every day. Every day I wake up in the morning and uh, my first question is how to support innovation. So internationalization is uh, second really, really um, uh, important pillar in, in, in our work. And finances, of course, you need, uh, you always need more money. And, and we help our companies to find uh, additional uh, sources to develop their solutions, to con connect them uh, with um, uh, investors. So we do also, we, we are not only moral support, we also give financial support to our members. And actually, that's about it. So we really hope, help, uh, hope that we can help our companies to ex expand to the new markets and to develop new services with, with help uh, international partners and, and funding different funding mechanisms. So yes, this is, this is me and uh, these are my contacts. So. So times uh, times changed, Andy. I should yes. I have to say yes. Yeah. Okay, Perret. I've got a couple of questions for you because I'm conscious we, we're, 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 we've got a we've only got you for so long. What I'd like to know is I see in Estonia one of the great connectors in our ecosystem uh, network. Can you give us an example of where you perhaps work with some of our other ecosystems um, in some some projects? Uh, with, with with Estonia, actually, uh, I it was uh, European Connected Health Alliance that actually connected us with uh, with Calicia cluster, for instance, and with Calicia, with Gisela, we have had like really many successful projects mm -hmm. and many more to come. I hope we are preparing a new one. So this was a really concrete example and i have to say that they are doing good so they're really reliable partners and and they actually know what they what they are after and this is one of the good examples 
And of course, what is really important is this, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't happen this way that, uh, okay, we have an idea, then I will connect uh, with European, uh, connected, uh, European Health Alliance. Maybe they have somebody for me, but we constantly communicate um, with, the, with the network in order to find those partners more suitable for us. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say that we collaborate every day, but I have to say that I think that I speak to Gregor at least once a week or something, or we have some kind of interaction going on. So we always, um, we, we, we always monitor what is happening and what we have to offer, offer and what are, what are the needs we can actually satisfy through European Connected Health Alliance. So it, is, it, it needs work also from the member side. Yes. It's not only that I'm waiting for the for the yeah. goodies to come, but uh, by, but I also have to be a really active member of the network. I think that's important because I think we've been able to a introduce some of our members to to you as well as our ecosystems, and I think that's that's great opportunities for them, but also opportunities to collaborate, whether it's with Slovenia or Galicia or or other parts of our network, which are vital and and also part of those dots that we like to connect. One of the things I was, last thing I was going to ask you, um, what next? What what would what would you like to do next with us that we're not doing now? What can you think? You know, because you had the great vision back in 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 the day with starting up the Digital House Society with us. You always seem to be one step ahead, and that's really good to see. And and, and as a little secret, our ecosystems are always interested to know what are the Estonians doing about this. So, what's happening next in Estonia? Tell us. No one else will know. <laughs> What's that? Actually, what we are doing right now, we are redesigning our whole whole concept of uh, e health and, and governance of e health. So mm -hmm. this is something that um, it's a big project that we are, we are doing, and uh, it's it's not that our connected health cluster is doing this, but our our government is is doing the the work, and we are pretty actively involved in this process, and partly it's because. We are the connector of the ecosystem here and also also cross border. And uh, but I was thinking also, how should we collaborate more? Maybe, of course, ge ge geographical scope is really important because it, specifically nowadays when you can't travel as much as you want to. So in that sense, I think that we should collaborate more because our companies, they pretty they need like pretty badly, uh, these international connections. But the other thing is that I've been working for them on, on the minister's level, and now I'm working um, on more on tactical level with companies. Mm. And Andy, I have a, a, a small problem. I can uh, just only between me and you. Yes. <laughs> we need to connect more policy level with, with the tactical level. This is something that uh, I can't do alone. And I, I, I think that Digital Health Society is, some, is, is, is a platform for that, where we can collaborate more, because I can see how what how is the everyday life um, uh, for the companies, and and they need really need um, some kind of connection with the policy and vice versa. Mm. Policy work needs to be connected to the real life as well. Okay, that's helpful. Just because you've asked and because I'm nice. I'm going to put a really good case study in front of you now, mm -hmm. which is our German ecosystem, because mm -hmm. I think they've done some really good work around connecting up policy, okay, with innovation, especially within the, the German market. But firstly, thank you very much for that insight into Estonia. I think for those people who are listening in from the rest of our network who've not come across the Estonian ecosystem, there's your contact. Um, I would encourage you to make 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 direct contact with Perret. You can okay, find me you. by LinkedIn, so I'm there, available. Thank you, Andy. Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you for it. I'm going to move now over to into Germany. Uh, just by way of introductions, the Medical Valley um, ecosystem joined our network as part of the German presidency. And you'll, you'll see a theme here in this session where we've got a link between the EU presidencies that we talked about yesterday and also with Nick Schneider and Germany. And then with our ecosystem network has grown and, and grown with uh, those presidency periods as, as a lasting legacy. And that's something we want to be able to encourage and do with all of our ecosystems and our comics. Benjamin, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Andy. So my name is Benjamin. 
I'm representing Medic Valley, so I'm head of international service. So since five years, my mission is to support companies to in the health tech field to scale up internationally. So which means supporting companies uh, from Europe as well, have a look in international markets and vice versa, companies from everywhere uh, to f get their boots on the German ground. So um, I've prepared some slides of us. I hope you can see them. Yeah, if you could make that presentation mode a little clearer, because yeah. it's, it's still um, blocking at the moment. Wondering. Yeah, so I see it as well. So, no. And now all perfect. So um, just for a reminder, you might ask you where we are located. So I put on a map here from Europe, Germany, and we are a regional uh, cluster as a medical device association in northern Bavaria. We have uh, 230 members and as well as we heard today, um, they are coming from multiple sites. So uh, of course, a lot of them, I guess around about 130 to 180 are medical industry players, but as well uh, research organizations and what is very important to get connected with the, the caregivers and the political power. So these are our membership uh, coming from all stakeholders which are more or less relevant to support growing medtech companies and these are more or less our mission and um, why we tell about us that we are a leading ecosystem for healthcare innovation so what are we doing we are running an incubator already since 2003 so we have uh, almost 20 years now in experience in supporting rising medical device company. So this behind me in the virtual background is our building. Um, but we are offering a lot of services exactly for these young growing companies in seed programs, free seed programs and anything else, which is around 200 companies, which we support each year. Um, I talked already a little bit about um, our background. So here, the area is covering more or less 500 medical device related technology companies. Most of them are members of us. We have a large research base, a lot of hospitals and our own region. So the north of Bavaria is covering 3.5 million people. So this is why we are very engaged here in the region to have it like a, a, a living lab. We try to use specific modes, which the German reimbursement structure is offering to to uh, have good innovations uh, in a test market here as, as, as far as it is possible within the, the system. But also ahead of it, we are part of the European Health Alliance uh, and uh, the EIT uh, program, for example, and very open for uh, more collaboration because we are all humans or the technology our companies are inventing are helping everybody else so this is why for us it's really about accelerating innovation because it's helping anybody and we want to share as well our resources here so there on the right you can see just some some highlights about us so the german government mandated us as the national digital health hub uh, which we can uh, have since 2017 we are as well awarded as the leading edge class cluster for medical devices already in 2010. And uh, right now we are mandated by the Bavarian ministry to, to do the platform management for uh, their medical technology and digital health. And as I mentioned, we are part of the EIT consortium. Today, it's about connecting the dots, but I assume you're also a little bit interesting what are projects which we're running so that you have some feeling. So we are engaged, for example, about data access projects. This is where what we get to know from feedback from our members and as well what we have heard as well for support to them to get better to the market. So we established a uh, clinical data center. We are part of the large European program of GAIA-X, for example. Uh, we are running research and, and community projects within, within digital health, where we are as well part of consortium. Um, so there are two right now about digital uh, twins in our region, but as well about digital oncology or digital dementia. These are projects which are coming here from the cluster in Bavaria, where we do where we support. And what we are always having are a lot of 
uh, networking events activities. So at the moment we have a virtual hackathon uh, running since uh, two weeks now, where people can apply, get, uh, get receive challenges from who are active supported by our larger members facing problems that they have. So is even younger companies, people really interesting in solving problems and hackers can just participate. And yeah, that's what we do. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm here since five years now. So we as well have seen that Germany is very interesting for, for smaller enterprises from, from other countries in Europe. And this is why we as well established some service for companies we can offer more or less the whole chain, but uh, normally companies are already e-certificated and want to get market analysis. Uh, this is something which we or partner from us can support you. We can, and this is our strength, support you with partner network. So this is uh, here in Bavaria, but as well above, we are very good connected here in Germany. And we have a very complicated reimbursement situation in Germany. Um, other companies in uh, countries in, uh, in Europe as well, but others are uh, all are different. And this is why we focus here as well and support activities for foreign companies to understand where is their reimbursement opportunity. And yeah, these are offerings which we, we are here. And we uh, are very lucky that we can part of be part of the community. I'm online in the matchmaking. So anybody who's interested just came up and um, I will be happy to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Benjamin. I think a really good deep dive there into one of our three ecosystems that we've got within Germany. All of the ecosystems have got connections between themselves. I'm interested in coming back to you later, Benjamin, to talk about some of the ways in we can work externally. You mentioned just now about some of the exciting opportunities you've got there. And I think there's a number there for our other ecosystems and our members and our partners within our community to get involved with. So as Benjamin said, make contact with him in the uh, networking facility. One of the things I think was, was really interesting was with, with, with Germany is how they dealt with the impact of the pandemic. And our network's grown since then, since we got involved with the German presidency and then built our network up. And we're now very pleased to be working very closely with our ecosystem based in Slovenia, who are current presidents of the EU. And I couldn't be prouder to introduce my colleague Gregor from, from Slovenia, who's going to talk about the ecosystem there, healthdays.si. Gregor, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. So um, I'm, I'm also very happy to be in this uh, very privileged position. Uh, namely, I, I share two hats, or I'm, I work under two hats. One of them is uh, HealthDay.si, uh, and the other one is the ECH Alliance, where, where I work along uh, Andy and Carolina and, and Karina and uh, Bladen and Brian and so on. So thank you very much for, for this, for this uh, privilege and also presenting today. Um, I should be focusing um, largely on the presidency that is going on uh, right now. And you will see, you know, um, a few of the turns of the events I would like to basically show you. I think it's a great learning learning lesson for us. Um, and I hope I can share this with you uh, guys. So let me share my screen. Uh, first of all, this is um, a brief picture of, of the stakeholder the stakeholders that um, that we are engaging with. Um, we have started in 214. Um, we uh, adopted the multi-stakeholder approach uh, as suggested by um, ECH Alliance in 215. Um, sorry, it was 216 early in February. Um, and um, I, I have to say that I, I strongly believe in this multi-stakeholder um, approach. Um, and and I, I believe even for business, if, if I, I do come from the commercial side of of, um, of, of healthcare, um, I used to do, and I still consider myself a, rather a marketing person more than, than um, a healthcare specialist. Um, I think it's very important to understand that in um, in healthcare you can't move ahead unless you get trust from from stakeholders that are not driven commercially. So that that they are completely different from 
I don't know, uh, retail where you are trying to sell to, uh, to a retailer who has a similar interest to you. It's just rather a negotiation of the margins and the quantities, etc. Healthcare is different. And this is this is what the multi-stakeholder approach will, will bring you. And I'm really proud to say that every one of those logos represents an organization, a ministry, a company or, or a similar um, entity uh, that we have uh, created sort of, um, in some cases, very, very deep relationships with. And uh, thank you for uh, to Pirate for mentioning, you know, the chats we are having. I think the stronger the network, the, the more you will have this. And you can't have it unless you build some uh, friendships along the way as well. So uh, my next uh, slide talks about the presidency. Um, first, uh, we had the presidency um, at the end of August, beginning of September. Um, I just focused on, of course, the presidency is a half, half year uh, um, period. So it's this um, right now. Um, but in terms of digital health, the focus of, let's call it the country, um, uh, we had it in at the end of August. Um, the title of, of our event, which was like a five day ongoing from Monday to Friday, uh, was um, European Health Data Spaces and Digital Transformation. I, I think it's very obvious. And what we decided to do is to find for each of those days, we decided to find uh, relevant partners and speakers from um, these countries that are represented there. Um, and um, the event, of course, needed to be hybrid. Um, in Slovenia organized uh, uh, one space for all these events. It is called uh, the Digital Hub or Digital Center of Slovenia. And uh, you could um, basically um, address any topic um, from agriculture to industry to, uh, to healthcare as well. Um, and this particular week, the week was digital healthcare. Um, it was a collective organization by uh, Health Day and uh, technology park and, and uh, the companies that are mentioned here. I would uh, uh, emphasize ECH Alliance as well. And here's the here I come to the first point. And the first point is that all things didn't start well. Uh, they did end well. So there was a lot of praise at the end of this week, how well it was organized. Uh, but it started with um, uh, already more than a year ago, and, and I guess even more, when it, we tried to uh, convince uh, the Slovenian government, the ministry, etc., that ECH Alliance and, and the group even around Health Day um, should be the leading partner for, for this. And we were not successful. So we didn't get this uh, position. Um, but what we were offered in June, so very late, uh, you, you know that the presidency starts in July. In June, uh, the, the um, Chamber of Commerce offered us basically space. They said, there's the space, you can have that week, uh, do anything with it. We will give you basically zero budget. We will give you um, zero speakers. Um, we will not even take care of uh, some other things. You, you should even pay for your own, own catering. Um, so we didn't take it um, uh, negatively, um, sort of why why zero support? Um, because the support was there from the previous years in terms of the, the relationships that we had um, uh, with, the, with the network. And if there was not, if this network was not present, uh, I definitely would be against it. So we, we decided to do it for, for the partners. Um, and each of us took on a uh, yeah. And uh, what happened was, uh, we 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 found uh, really good praise and, and success um, and, and strengthened uh, further strengthening of, of the network. So my learnings here are that, and this is just um, confirmed to what I've learned uh, along the discussions I'm having with different ecosystems. Uh, you can't claim that you can be a coordinator, but you are not an ecosystem. So how they is not directly we can coordinate an ecosystem. The ecosystem is there, like, you know, there are animals in the forest, there are plants in the forest and, and all the other, you know, organisms. And it doesn't matter if you're the biologist describing it or not, you know, the ecosystem is there. Okay. So the best thing you can do is to be a good observer and then somehow get involved, but not necessarily, you know, change everything, etc. Because it has a certain natural flow. Okay. 
The second thing is that once you will find unity, um, because uh, it's very hard to find unity, um, because the interests are super different. Also, uh, people are chasing money all the time, chasing projects, trying to do various things. Time schedules are, are tight, super tight. People are, are stressed. Uh, in, and now in pandemic, in pandemic uh, it goes to the power of being stressed. Um, but once you find this unity, sort of understanding, sometimes even beyond words, um, you will accomplish a lot of things. And that's what we are seeing. So there is a lot of trust. And uh, one peculiarity, it's not just an event, but presidency does, is a magnet to, to attract politicians. So getting a uh, minister is easy. Uh, getting uh, the secretary's attention is easy. Uh, we didn't get support. Um, and... Uh, that's a little bit uh, bitter, um, but uh, I do believe in, in in the ecosystem, and I'm I'm not actually blaming anybody uh, in this. Um, and we believe it's a long term long term game that goes way beyond uh, political term. Um, and I, I guess you know uh, people wise enough um, know this, and and uh, healthcare providers, let's start with them, are there for their whole careers, so they are not changing, and we have to forge relationships with with everybody and, and of course with them as well. That's it from my side. Thank you for that, Gregor. Very, very informative. I can remember visiting the Slovenian ecosystem when it kicked off um, many, many years ago, it seems now. And and I think from an outside, and, and always with ecosystems, we, 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 we get this message from an outside point of view. Slovenia is there, it's connecting, it's connecting in projects, it's connected with the members from the ecosystem, like organizations like Better, who are not just excelling within Slovenia, but all over Europe and beyond. And you've got other ecosystem members there that we work with as well, like Arrowfast and Caretronic, that are fantastic members, not just of your local ecosystem within Slovenia, but globally across our network. And I think that's one of the true advantages of, of being in a network, is allowing that potential to, to cross-pollinate and share good practice and, and share adoption of innovation across border, whether it be uh, in, in, in the UK or in Spain or in Serbia or up in the Netherlands and in Slovenia as well, because some of your networks that you're involved with are also involved with some of our other ecosystems. networks, And I think that's one of the nice things about the network here, that we're a part of a, not just our own community, but a community that's got other self reliant but also interdependent ecosystems that link with us too. So that's a great input from, from, from Slovenia. I think there's a lot of untapped, untapped talent still to come out from Slovenian ecosystem. We'll come on to how we do that later. One of the, one of the values of, of that ecosystem in Slovenia, I think, has taught me about the, the nature of political buying. And in different countries, that conversation's gone on to mean different things. Political buying isn't about politicians buying things. Obviously, it's about having that support, that policy level support that we heard from Pirette at the start of the conversation. We see baked in in the, in the support for the German ecosystem from Benjamin, the, where they've been you know, awarded this digital health hub certification and the other awards that they get from their government. I'm going to move now from Slovenia a little bit north because this is about our presidency's and, and the presidencies of the EU and how our ecosystems have worked um, within those presidency periods. I'm going to use the net, and I'm, 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 I'm major on the political support because in Finland, during the presidencies of the, uh, their presidency of the EU, and, and we heard from Tappany yesterday, their presidency had a, an, a, as a desire to build a lasting legacy of not just an ecosystem, but a network of ecosystems. That ecosystem network within Finland now means that they can collaborate together in ways that they couldn't do before. And in Finland, the ecosystem model is well understood and well developed and leads the way. So I'm really proud to introduce Juha now from our Helsinki Health Capital ecosystem to talk about some of the work they do there, because I think that's another fantastic opportunity to say, let's go deeper dive and see where we can connect some dots with Helsinki. Juha, over to you. Thank you. Very, very nice to be here. Thank you, Andy. And uh, I'm very happy to represent Finland here. And uh, we from, from Helsinki, so we are one of uh, perhaps the five uh, major 
ecosystems in Finland. And uh, I'm really happy to discuss a little bit about uh, what, what we are doing. So let me share my screen and there. So yes, uh, from Helsinki, the capital region, and uh, and uh, I would say that um, in health technology uh, we have quite a lot of focus in uh, and, and uh, know-how in uh, digital health. Uh, our colleagues in Turku, for example, they have stronghold in life sciences. Uh, Oulu, in northern Finland, they are very strong in in uh, mobile technologies, etc. So there are different strongholds, and and um, uh, we do collaborate quite a lot together. So uh, what we do at Health Capital Helsinki, uh, we are ecosystem developer. Uh, Gregor just mentioned that uh, you can't kind of claim the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is there, but our function is to make it, make it even better. And we are publicly funded by, by largest cities and, uh, and major hospital and, and uh, uh, universities. Uh, in the bottom, we have the ecosystem. So we try to make it better. So we are tuning the ecosystem, uh, connecting people, uh, uh, making the services better. And then we are bringing growth in two ways. So, so we are supporting the innovation, uh, uh, the, uh, research projects, uh, young startups, and uh, and growing startups. Uh, we organize different type of events. So, for example, for health projects uh, or research projects throughout fund, uh, we are organizing an event in in January where we are connecting and, and pitching these uh, to to investors. Many of them first time. Uh, we are part of Health Incubator Helsinki, a new incubator that is supporting early startups. We are 23 startups in that uh, community. And, and then as part of this work, we also connected with the global corporations, investors, and we try to match these uh, global stakeholders with our ecosystem and overall increase the, the investments. And the international community, that's the super important part. So we all have ambition to be a global player and uh, we want to connect our community with, with global partners. One example of this type of uh, international collaboration was a, a big pharma reverse pitch event that we organized in September. Uh, there we uh, invited uh, startups throughout Nordics and, and Baltics to, to meet with, um, with global uh, pharma corporations. Uh, ju just a kind of general view of, of, of our ecosystem. So uh, the leading hospital and science education are in core essence of, of, of our ecosystem. And whose hospital is one of the largest in Europe. And actually it was just ranked in, in top 20 best hospitals in the world. So, so really, really major institution. And uh, University of Helsinki is one of the top 100 universities in the world. Uh, great networks. Uh, we are just next week, uh, we have the event called Slush here in uh, Helsinki. So yes, that means slush many times because it may rain, uh, rain snow and water here in Finland. Uh, this year now post COVID, so, so we are inviting 8,000 people, uh, investors to meet startups and, and health will be one important part of that. Uh, health data, I will come, come back to that on next slide a little bit, uh, super important. And as mentioned, I think that the digital technology is that a stronghold in Finland and and one of the benefits is that uh, we are connecting uh, digital technologies with science and that is creating a lot of exciting startups so we have estimated that in Finland we have roughly 400 startups health startups and uh, about 100 of those are are in in uh, metropolitan region of Helsinki and, and then we do engage a lot of, lot of larger corporations with our operation, and uh, I see that as very important fundament. Just one word about uh, health data. So that is one of the key assets we have, and, and it's the base of, of digital development and, and AI and, and all that, of course. Um, so we have a really long history in collecting uh, good health registers and data. So cancer registers is 1953. Uh, we have um, uh, hospital data, uh, we, we are collecting different type of data, including biobank data. And all that is currently available in, in, in di digital format. And we do have supporting legislation to enable uh, research. So we have Biobank Act 
uh, we have a, a legislation for secondary use of healthcare data, etc. Legislation is an area which needs uh, continuous attention and, and uh, again currently when the legislation is, is being renewed and changing, we need to be very vigilant that the changes are enabling for research and innovation and not limiting. Uh, one point about uh, the digital care that I'd like to mention is that uh, we have just uh, during last year, this year rolled out a uh, very large uh, electronic patient care patient management system uh, based on uh, EPIC system. Uh, the application is called Apot in Finland. Interestingly, that that um, uh, patient care system is combining uh, secondary care at whose hospital, but also uh, the two largest cities, um, Helsinki and Vantaa, are utilizing the same system and they are actually collecting both social and, and healthcare data from primary care into the same system. So I'm very much looking forward to the future. So, so that will be one important platform uh, to, to develop innovations in the future. So there, a quick uh, introduction to, to Finland and I'm really happy to, to be here and, and continue the discussion. That was excellent. Thank you very much for that. I think what you see there in Helsinki is again another nutshell of a of an ecosystem that's got so many connections, so many stakeholders, and connecting those dots locally and then internationally is something they're very, very good at. We'll be pleased to feature more about Helsinki later on in, in 2022, um, where we're going to be featuring them as one of our ecosystems of the month. We talk about connecting at the dots. And let me just give you a little uh, a, a localized story there. What you have referred to there was one of their partners or stakeholders in the Helsinki health capital ecosystem was Lauria University. Now Lauria University are members of ECH Science. They're members of the ecosystem stakeholders there too. They also work very closely with our Canadian ecosystem partners and also very closely with our Australian ecosystem partners. What that does, it enables us to grow our network using our network's connections. By using those connections, we can then work much closer with both our ecosystems, our members and their members. So that gives us a vital opportunity as the global connector to be able to not just connect up dots across Europe or within countries, but across the globe. So we're also very pleased to be hopefully working with colleagues in Helsinki and across Finland, not just with their, their, their ecosystem in Helsinki, but with a wider network of ecosystems within Finland, which we've seen grow and grow but also the Nordic cluster. We've got a fantastic cluster of ecosystems spreading from Iceland who have just joined us all the way across to where we started off today with Estonia uh, by listening to Perret. We've got a fantastic number of, of ecosystems, some of which have been on earlier on when, in some of the sessions around our projects from Denmark, but also from Norway and from Sweden and across Finland, which we think give a unique cluster of ecosystems that can target areas such as health procurement in a way that we couldn't necessarily do um, using our thematic innovation ecosystems. I will come on to those later on this afternoon in the session hour we're going to grow our network. So we've talked about one of the ecosystems from Helsinki uh, from our Finnish presidency period. We've had Estonia who, broke, who built and created our, our first ever digital health society um, uh, network. We've also heard from, from Germany who grew their, grew their ecosystem network. Uh, both during their presidency, but during the first initial hit of the pandemic. I'm going to look at a little bit further now and look into the future. Um, not because we have any special buttons, but because we are very pleased to, to, to bring along today our newest ecosystem from Eau de France in, in France, the Euro Sante ecosystem. And they're going to talk a little bit about what they do, um, both within France, with the exciting developments they've got there coming up with their both their, their new um, programs we heard about yesterday in, in the session with the Ministry of Health, but also the work they're going to do as we're as, as, as looking forward to the presidency that's coming up in January for France and not just the political presidency. So, so hey, over to you, please. 
Thank you, Andy. Um, so my name is Soel. Uh, I'm working for Eura Santé since five years now, uh, and I'm really pleased to be a part of this uh, this fantastic panel. Uh, so I will share you um, our ecosystem uh, from Eura Santé. So let me just share my screen. Uh, is it okay? Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, what is Eura Santé? Eura Santé, so we are an economical uh, development agency dedicated to the health and nutrition sector. Um, so, we are located in, in Lille, uh, up north in France, uh, and we are uh, really well located because we have uh, direct access to five major European capitals. Uh, we are an internationally recognized scientific cluster because we work really closely with uh, 80 research labs and more than 4,000 public and private research uh, uh, activities. Um, we manage Eura Santé two sites of excellence, uh, so it's uh, quite huge uh, for us to, to manage. We work closely with, uh, for example, eight uh, hospitals in the region, uh, four universities. And within the Eura Santé Bio Business Park, we have uh, at least uh, more than now, I think it's 200 companies. Um, and uh, we manage also a competitive uh, cluster uh, for nutrition. Um, so it gathers uh, 355 companies right now uh, and uh, they de dedicated to to work uh, on ecosystems and to to develop collaborative projects um, so we run also three incubators but uh, i will come uh, to that uh, later on uh, and we manage uh, five major european business convention dedicated to the health sector so we have biofit on around biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies MedFit around, uh, around uh, MedTech, Aging Fit for uh, the, the, the silver economy and the well-being, and NutriVent uh, for, for the nutrition side. So Eurasan is the leading healthcare agency from the Hauts de France region. So our perimeter is really regional. So we work only uh, within the region, but we are connected to the other region in France and also uh, uh, in Europe, uh, thanks to uh, uh, some European projects. So um, we manage three incubators. So um, the bio incubator, uh, which is dedicated to help companies and um, research projects uh, to from the ideation to the introduction and fund fundraising. Um, so we have the bio incubator, which is really dedicated to e-health, uh, biotech uh, and medtech. Eur Alimentaire, which is the food tech incubator and um, Eura Senior, uh, which is dedicated to the silver economy uh, side. So um, in all the France region, we have uh, more than 1,000 1, companies uh, and that represent um, 12 billion uh, in turnover. So it's, it's quite a huge um, number. Uh, we have uh, more than 160 clinics and hospitals within our region, uh, gathering more than 90,000 health professionals. So we are the leading region for te te technical textiles, uh, what's because uh, mainly because the historical region uh, uh, in, in France that uh, was mainly dedicated to textile. Uh, leading region uh, for nutritional, uh, for nutrition and uh, functional in ingredients, and the third largest data management and EF uh, region within France. Uh, so, since the creation of Eura Santé uh, in 1992, uh, we have helped more than 240 companies, uh, created 130 companies, and raised uh, around 600, 650 million in France. So, what about the market and the, the drivers uh, around digital health? Uh, so, in, in, in our region, we have uh, more than 100 companies uh, working around uh, data management, uh, cybersecurity for health, uh, consulting uh, companies uh, for, uh, for the health sectors. So, we are the third region for EF and data management, and the, 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 um, the turnover of all those companies is around uh, 155 million euros uh, in 2020. Um, so those companies are working towards um, 
the, the major challenges that we have to overcome, uh, I think it's it's uh, the same for other European uh, uh, co um, colleagues. Um, so the, the first one is the global aging population, which is quite a huge problem. Uh, the inequality of access uh, we see in France, for example, some part of uh, the countryside that don't have any medical uh, equipment uh, or, or doctors to so that's why telemedicine could be a really good thing to improve the quality of uh, care um, and the around the data management uh, what i think is mostly important is uh, how to protect those data and cyber security is an, is an issue so the main field of uh, specialties for france is hosting services we have uh, around five or five six big companies uh, that host uh, uh, data management in EHR. Um, the uh, AI and big data also is quite uh, important for us. Um, so the market in France, we have, we, we, we've seen uh, big opportunities, but also increased competition because in France, we have lots of startups, lots of projects that are working around digital uh, health sector um, startups and also uh, SMEs and big companies. Uh, so that represents in France uh, more than 30,000 uh, jobs. Um, and in terms of uh, startups, uh, we have more than 500 startups uh, in, the, in the country that are really working around data management, AI, uh, uh, connected devices, uh, remote monitoring solutions, and so on. Um, so. For me, that's the big picture for for our region, and I will be pleased to to answer some of the, some of your questions. Thank you very much. I think that's a fascinating level of information. Um, I'm really pleased to find always find out more about our ecosystems every time we speak, and I think that's a positive note for me. Either I'm either forgetting stuff, um, but the new information there. Just to touch on something there, if I may, we're going to be talking later on today about some of our thematic ecosystems. One of those will be targeting the area of social determinants of health. I think that could be vital for your ecosystem to take a role in. So we're going to be doing some work with the Americans on that. And I think there's a vital role across Europe because health inequalities are baked in, I think, to just about every ecosystem I've ever visited. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, certainly in France, the picture and the richness and the diversity you've got there within your community and provision for health will be a very, very interesting picture to paint to colleagues from America, colleagues from Australia, etc. So stay around and we'll chat about that a little bit later. Just on your ecosystem, just just, you know, we're, we're going to come to some questions in a moment because we're, we're, we're one of those sessions, strange enough for me, that's ahead of schedule. So I got a luxury of asking a couple of questions. For, for you, and I'll start with you if I may, and I'm going to bring in the rest of our panel. A quick question for you um, regarding the, the ecosystem there. I mean, you're a very, very busy ecosystem with lots and lots of companies. What resources, um, and we've got a question in, 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 the, in, the, in the chat function, you know, what is it wrong, you know, to, to set one of these up? What resources do you need in terms of staff, time, connections, etc.? Can you give us a picture perhaps from France and then I'll, I'll, I'll nip across to, to see, speak to Germany and, and Finland and Slovenia as well. But for you in France, what resources does that take? Um, so for our side, it takes a lot uh, because uh, we are helping uh, companies from the really beginning of the ID to going to uh, raise funds. So you need to help them around the HR, help them around the marketing side, around the strategy, around mm. fundraising, around business model. Uh, so in La Santé, we are really well staffed because we are more than 100 people right now. Uh, so we have experts for each of those subjects that really are dedicated to help uh, each company, each startups uh, towards the development of their, uh, their activities. So it's really a uh, time consuming and really collaborative uh, way of working because um, in the development stage of the, of the of a company or, or, uh, or a research project, you have to involve those experts at the right time, at the right moment uh, in order to be really uh, 
um, fully uh, equipped to help them, you know, uh, go and uh, process from the incubation to the acceleration and then go and uh, to the market. So it's really a time consuming process. But uh, in France, I, I think uh, we have an ecosystem that is um, really um, well known for helping companies uh, and, you know, spend the most of our time to, to add them. And our finances comes from uh, public uh, sector. So that's why we are also uh, uh, really happy to to do that because it's, a, it's, it's something that... Uh, that is mandatory for us to help. Gregor, back to you. And I'll come to you, Juha. What resources do you need within Slovenia to, to keep that ecosystem ticking over? I would start with uh, how you launch because some, uh, um, I'm not saying that, you know, this is not a vibrant, um, network of ecosystems but still you know sometimes questions come you know how 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 to launch everything and i think there has to be some luck but you know uh, not just that uh, it's, it's really a combination um and and it grows into something that uh, in our case definitely became a passion for at least a few of of, of, of the people there so we are a very small uh, uh, ecosystem partially uh, or rather project-wise supported uh, by some of the national let's say uh, funds uh, but rather not 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 in a, in a systematic way like having a hundred employees like just so high uh, uh, mentioned there so what what we would like to do in in the future um, is uh, to have even more focus towards the patient um, there was a doctor i spoke to two days ago who said something in the likes of this. He said, as long as uh, the patient is, is the first in line, you know, for you, the money will follow. Uh, but the, the moment you turn this around and put money in the first place, you will lose the patients and then the money will go as well. Um, I, I strongly believe in that. And Juha, in Finland, what sort of yeah. resources do you need there? Because you talked about funding from from um, from 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 within Helsinki, from business fin. So, what what in terms of people, what resources do, does that need in terms of keeping that moving? Yeah. So, so in Finland, we have um, uh, the system is a little bit um, scattered, so that there are several stakeholders that are supporting in different phases. And I think that overall, looking at the feedback, so I think that we have uh, quite a lot of uh, well functioning. Um, units and, and things and um, of course everything needs development and uh, we keep, be better connected and all that uh, but the basic fundamentals are there and uh, looking at the recent research that we did to, to finish uh, health startups uh, it was quite interesting so so we saw that uh, uh, the most important thing for them was funding so that's the biggest problem or, or issue second second biggest was the reference customers the, the first reference customers, and the third one was was uh, talent, especially commercial talent. And, and uh, when you look at the, the type of um, uh, funding that is needed, uh, we need to find new ways for health startups for their early, uh, like like seed, uh, sort of a seed funding uh, for public sources. And, and there's a little bit different needs for health startups than if we go to. to tech startups. So, so some new tools are needed and this is something that we are working with. Secondly, I think that the, the different um, type of support that we are giving to startups, uh, we need to have the right talent in, in our supporting organizations. So we need a substance, we need to understand startups and we need, need to understand customers and uh, really be a good player there. And what I think is really good is that uh, with all the stakeholders I've been talking uh, within Finland is that that we all uh, we are a small country and and we are aiming uh, to global market and and we want to be best uh, at least in certain certain segments and areas globally. So I think the ambition level is good. Uh, a lot of good stuff, but uh, a lot remains to be done regarding resources. In in my team, we have five people that uh, that are supporting in different ways. The startup, but then there's community of, of uh, tens of people uh, around around us. Interesting.
Interesting, I think, and, and, and a nice richer pitch in it. And, and I think I always hear from ecosystems, and this is maybe it's just a bit, oh, we're always uh, a small ecosystem. And I don't think, I've, I've never heard of an ecosystem that says, oh, we're a really large ecosystem. So take 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 your pride in, in the size of your ecosystem, because we've got some as, as big as a small city, and some as large as a nation and even a continent. So, so I think we've got some great ecosystem examples there. Let's not forget Germany, though. Benjamin. What resources does it take in Medical Valley to get that award? Uh, thanks. So for the awards, um, I mean, this was maybe a large push. Uh, I think our team was there, just the guys running the incubator. And I think we had two full-time equivalents people um, in 2008 um, in the team. And um, for that, our we applied for a grant, which were more than 40 million by the German government. And so all our ecosystem players were engaged to participate. And this is what our team, I think we're right now 15 full-time equivalent people, but this is where we are still stick to is the power from our partners. <laughs> so if you have engaged partners, you don't need um, a lot of stuff in the end, but you, you are, it's very complicated for the networking within mm -hmm. and trying to get projects done. So in the end, when I look at my schedule and the others from my teammates, we can be even more people and still had a lot of things to do. <laughs> um, but again, it's coming from the partners you have. Um, and this is why it's very hard to say how the resources are, because you need to engage with people in your ecosystem. I think that engagement is true, Benjamin. I think Gregor hit the nail on the head because no one person makes that ecosystem, not one organization. It's a collaborative venture and it's a group of stakeholders. And I think, you know, a couple of you have mentioned the, the P word, projects. A quick cut, we've talked about some of the ways in which we connect up our ecosystems. Can you talk about some of the, you know, all of you have mentioned European projects. What role do you think we've got within the network to be able to help match up projects with our ecosystems and put our ecosystems in that driving seat for our project because we bring both the need and solutions let's go back to you Juha, please in finland in terms of projects you're involved with from maybe a european um, collaborative side what do you need from a network like the european connected health lines Sorry, was the, uh, there was a small break, was it fun? No, no, it's okay. What, from, from, from the Helsinki uh, ecosystem point of view, what do you need from a network like ours to be able to connect you up with partners for projects? Is it uh, project partners? Is it certain types of people who've got new ideas? What, what, what would you need from a network? Well, uh, getting connected with the right people, and especially now that the traveling is a little bit more difficult than normally, I, I think getting the right people connected is, is very important. Uh, I think one one uh, area of expertise that, that we require is that uh, for, for our startups, uh, they would need a uh, really global level of specialists, for example, to support mm -hmm. them, mentors and different type of supporters, definitely uh, connecting uh, with the international investors and, mm -hmm. and all that. So that is important. But also, I think that uh, looking at some initiatives in Europe, so they might have, have new opportunities. Uh, there's now the, the European Digital Inno Innovation Hub uh, network that is being mm -hmm. built up and, and other these type of uh, things that are now upcoming in Europe. Uh, so definitely, I think there are there are opportunities. and. I think this is going more and more into direction that, that, that we do build international networks and uh, the networks within Europe for sure, super important. So, Excellent. And, Thank and, and perhaps just one more comment. I think that uh, slightly more difficult topic, but I think that within Europe, we need to pay attention on, on our legislation that we are developing, enabling legislation that will allow us to develop the data and um, and the data management so that we will con continue to be competitive with the US and, and the rest of the world. I think there's a big uh, concern that we, we might kind of turn inside and then we might be losing the game uh, with the yeah. global audience. So that's something to pay attention. I think that's a vital point. And I think one of the things we'll talk later, we're going to launch what will be our latest thematic innovation ecosystem. And that's going to be on health data. So we're working quite closely with Citra 
okay, around the health ecosystems and the data ecosystems within Finland to bring in an, a non-Finnish input from the rest of our ecosystem network. So we'll be continuing that within that, that sector, one of our, another way in which we partner, not just with our ecosystems, as I said, but with our members and our partners. Suha, in France, you, you mentioned the, the, the projects you're involved with there. Your, I, I've, I've seen, you know, projects with, with your name on often with our projects and our ecosystems. Tell us a little bit about how you use projects to, to make those connections. Um, so yeah, for Aura Santé, it's really something strategic to work uh, with other countries within the mm. EU and also uh, outside, uh, because we think that uh, startups need to think internationally uh, at the beginning, at the, at the first uh, stages of their development. Uh, so that's why we are looking for connections. Uh, we are looking to to work closely with um, other ecosystems. And for example, sometimes we we choose. Uh, some specific topics, uh, like for the silver economy, we have been uh, involved in a four-year EU project uh, that aimed that was that the aim was to really uh, uh, develop a cross-border uh, accelerator or, around uh, innovation for the uh, the aging people. Um, we are also looking to work uh, around data management, also because uh, we think that's it's a really strategic topic uh, for. Uh, the startups um, and also what we are looking within the, um, the EU project and ecosystems like uh, like yours is to have advices, uh, mm. especially around the health system, uh, because in France we have something really um, um, good in terms of uh, taking care of people. Uh, it's not the same uh, in other countries and we need to understand more uh, what uh, what is the health system and how it works in other countries? Uh, because for uh, for a startup that is located in France uh, and that is looking for the German uh, ecosystem, because it's quite a huge country, um, sometimes they, they come to us and, to, and they ask us questions about how uh, to develop a project in in Germany. Uh, what are the uh, the main um, uh, barriers like uh, um, the regulation around the health. Uh, so that's why we are also working with uh, an ecosystem with those projects because to have information, I think it's really important. I think uh, I, I can understand that. And I think, you know, because we can, uh, you can make those direct connections with Finland here today because they do health data. Benjamin. What Benjamin doesn't know, and the medical valley because he doesn't know about the, the DECA process, isn't probably worth knowing. So make those connections here today and also use the expertise from Gregor, who is our coordinator of all of those ecosystems as well and centred in, in, in Slovenia. One of the things to bring about here is one of the ways when people ask us how we do this, we do regular all coordinator calls. It's where we feature our, our ecosystems just to make those connections, so to connect up those dots between those 70 ecosystems we've got. We've got another one of those coming up shortly, later at the start of next month, we'll be featuring some of our ecosystems from Canada and Latin America. I'm conscious of time. Gregor, I'm going to come to you in a moment. I'm going to ask you two questions, not just the one. One is around funding, because I know obviously Slovenia have got experience of, of, of getting involved with funded projects. But then I also want to ask you, what next? What, what, what do you want to do next in Slovenia with the health days ecosystem that would make a difference in 2022? Cash first, future second. Cash first. <laughs> uh, yes, um, funding. Um, well, uh, you, you really have to be agile, I would say. So there, there are a lot of uh, experts um, that, that we see either in technology park, um, I would say the, the key part that for, for a health day um, uh, here, and the uh, ability to apply for funding. So from the, from the public side is very important. What we need more in terms of cash is commercial cash. We need more uh, VC funding. Um, we are far, far, far away from something that we would see in the States or perhaps in Israel or something like that, but even far away from uh, funding available in, um, in the larger European countries. So 
Um, we are working with a few local VC uh, people in terms of development of this commercial side of cash. Uh, public is fine. Um, there is a lot of work uh, you need to apply and, and uh, eventually funding comes. In terms of what we would like to do next, um, there is a, a sort of a strange, uh, I would say, idea that, that I, I will float here publicly. I think for the first time it might be even a surprise for my Slovenian colleagues. Um, uh, the idea is how to make sure that Helbe uh, remains in the public domain. Um, so how to make sure that uh, Helbe that is rather a project now, or a brand or a, or a domain, um, how, how does it belong to everybody? How does it belong to the stakeholders? So one of the uh, inspirations there, and if somebody has in here in the panel, or of course later on, has uh, suggestions, one of the inspirations is the Barcelona Health Club. Uh, a football club, sorry. <laughs> sorry, it was a slip of tongue. But uh, so, but Barcelona Football Club is uh, is not owned by uh, is not owned by by an entity by an owner, but it's owned by the members. So, can you make an eco ecosystem like Hell Day to be owned by the stakeholders? And that that's that's uh, something that we would like to explore uh, okay. because we believe uh, it can't be captured by I don't know uh, one one player or, or a few people. Yeah. Except. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. I'm conscious of time. We're determined to finish early here. So, Finland, what next? So, what next? Uh, so, so, we are definitely now planning the future. So, so we want to make uh, all, all the bits and pieces work better together. And uh, we are determined to find even better ways for, for, for the startup funding. So, so, that will be important. Uh, on, on the uh, community or, or, or society level, we definitely need to impact on, on the legislation that it will it will be uh, steered in the right direction. So, I think these are these are some some pretty good uh, important things to take and um, yeah, and and also to make make the uh, political decision makers to understand that. Uh, What's important is that there's so much value in health data. So I, I think that it's un that we make legislation that is protecting individuals, but then then stopping the, the wide benefits and the usage of the data for, for research and innovation. So that is something to be understood and, and something that uh, will need to be taken into account throughout Europe. So excellent. Benjamin, I want to hear from you, and then I'm gonna to come to you, Sahil, and hopefully we'll be done in time. So we've got a minute. Okay, perfect. And I'll be quick. So we have we had a lot of initiatives in our last legislative for digitalization and in the German healthcare market. I think this will proceed. So we from our team will focus a lot of that. And anyways, uh, the things that the, the, my colleague from Finland said, this is also very important. I highlighted this well in our slides. It is something to create pathways for people access clinical data to use that in, in an anonymized way, et cetera, of course, but this is a large point, which also all clusters are orientated on. Excellent. France, what's next for you in, in Eau de France? And you'll be on mute. Even better with, with sound. Yes. Uh, so for us, it's really, you know, to try to help our uh, startups to go abroad. Uh, that's the, one of the, the main topic for us. And uh, also around the, the, the future of uh, how the French presidency will look like in the next, uh, in the next month. Um, we don't know yet what would be the main strategy, uh, but uh, I think that um, we will concentrate our efforts around um, um, you know positioning our country within the euro within the eu zone uh, mm. as one of the most uh, advanced uh, country around the digital health uh, so we, we are investing uh, a lot uh, especially uh, uh, since the covid uh, billions of uh, euros around uh, our infrastructure in terms of uh, uh, information system around connected health around AI and data management um, and um, well, yes, that could be our main goal, I think, to promote um, startups to become the next uh, big 
uh, companies like uh, Facebook or other other companies. We have Doctolib in France, which is uh, uh, one of our unicorn, uh, and we would like to make those uh, startups to become those kind of uh, huge companies. So that's brilliant. The, Brilliant. Uh, that's ambition in a nutshell for you. I think we've had an excellent session today. I think we've heard from some great ecosystems. Just a, a small deep dive down into each of those ecosystems. There's more later on about our ecosystem network and our growth as a network. I'm going to close now and suggest we all go off on a nice break and we'll come back afterwards. Um, and then we'll be hearing from my colleague Bledin Rees and Rachel Dunscombe. Thank you very much for all our speakers. My name's Andy Bleeden. I'll be back later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.